Hey guys, it's Melanie. Um, today I'll be showing you a few new things on Scratch uh, for your game. So things like player controlled movement, collisions, and gravity, and how to make that all work through programming. So, uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is player controlled movement. So you're actually going to start coding your game right now. We're going to start with an event block. So we're going to have the one click block first under events. When you click this flag up here, whatever it says under the code um, embedded in one click, that's what's going to happen. And then to stop, you just click on this thing again. So we're going to use one of those loops you learned about in the previous video, a forever loop under control. And you're going to have two if statements within this loop. If uh, two if then statements. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to find a way to make it so that the user can interact through the keyboard. So what you'll do is you'll have if one key is pressed, if the right key is pressed, then one thing will happen, and if the left key is pressed, then another thing will happen. So if the right arrow is pressed, you're going to go into motion. So basically, if you click the right arrow, your sprite is going to move 90 degrees get into its next costume and move a variable amount of steps, uh, the variable being speed. So you're going to have point and direction 90 degrees, then you go into looks because this is going to be a graphical animation, basically uh, next costume, and then you're going to have move, and then you're actually going to be making a variable called speed. It's already been set up, but basically you make variables and you'd want it to be just for this right only. So you have speed, you put it in here. And then you basically just replicate the entire thing with a few slight differences if you click on the left key. So that's again under sensing. And that's how the player interacts with the game through the keyboard basically. So now you'll have your left arrow and again you'll have point in direction, except for now it'll be negative 90. Instead of going to the right, you'll be going to the left. Again, you'll have next costume, and then you'll have move, once again, speed steps. Okay, so now you're going to make a new costume for your sprite. And how you do this is you go from scripts uh, up here. You can click onto the costumes and it shifts gears as long as your sprite is selected. So see how it's on the sprite right now? And you're finished. You right click over your sprite and click duplicate. And then you can basically use these controls to do whatever you want. So if I want to color in the fins and change them from like, let's say, purple to dark aqua blue. So it kind of blends in with the ocean and just draw some patterns. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. And you can get creative with this. This is the kind of graphic design component, so have fun with it. And that's my old design, but it's a little subtle, but anyway. Yeah. Okay, so another option when you're designing your second costume is what you can do is you can click on reshape at the very right, and you can actually select and kind of move around whatever you want to move around. So here I'm going to select the black border and I'm going to move it around to make uh, the tail a bit more sharp and pronounced. And you can really have fun with this and do whatever you want. Um, so basically it just works by color recognition. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to test out your code so you can actually see what your code is doing. So click on the green flag so test it out, click on the right arrow. What you should see is your sprite changing costumes as it moves to the right. Click on the left arrow, it'll actually flip over, flip over and then you'll see the changing again into all the sort of costumes that you designed as it moves. And you can just play around with this and see the work you've done so far. Okay, so one of the problems you might notice as you're going right to left is that when it goes to the left, it actually flips over um, its entire body and this is a little bug so it's some, a bug is basically something you didn't intend for your program to do and here's how to fix this bug you right click on this place where uh, all the sprites are listed you click on info and you choose this arrow right here and now whenever you move it's going to go in the intended angle so 
we are going to incorporate gravity into the game. So, uh, in most games uh, that use physics, including the 2D platformer that we're creating, gravity is something you'll have to deal with. So, here are a few things to remember. So, gravity is one of the four fundamental forces. It draws objects of masses towards each other. You don't have to worry about the other three for this game, but uh, force means acceleration upon mass where vertical velocity is constantly increasing at a certain rate and it can be stopped by collision with an obstacle in the way and in your game that could be a number of things including even just the floor uh, if you like later on place a floor here that can stop it from falling all the way down also kids this is a special fish that lives on air and it jumps just like us humans do there's a lot of theory that dolphins might have evolved to walk on land, or they used to walk on land, I don't remember, but this fish is special, and it walks on land and goes by the rules of the air, not of the water. Okay, yeah? Okay, so we're gonna add gravity to our game, and how we're gonna do that, first, in the player object, we're going to create two variables. We're gonna create y velocity, and we're going to create gravity. So remember, it's for this sprite only, because you don't want every object you make to fall. So you'll make gravity and y velocity. And then you want to set these variables. So over here, how we set speed to 10 in the previous video, now we're going to set gravity uh, to 1. That's going to be the value for this particular game. And we're going to set the y velocity to zero. It's going to start at zero, but since it's a variable, it'll be able to change throughout as we want it to. So you're going to add another one clicked, and you're going to you're going to do a forever loop. So that basically, when this green flag is clicked, this will always happen as long as it is clicked, just constantly over and over. You're going to go into data. You're going to change the y velocity by you're going to add an operation a multiplication operation and you're going to change y velocity by negative one times the gravity also now go into motion you're going to change y now you're in the coordinates x y and you're going to change y by the y velocity you've given it. Basically, as it accelerates downwards, it's gonna go faster and faster, and so you'll just be changing the velocity downwards accordingly. So that's why you'll keep multiplying it times gravity so it'll speed up, and you're gonna multiply by negative one because you know when you fall, you fall downwards, and so on the screen, your fish or whatever sprite you have is going to fall downwards. Yeah.